What's going on guys? Tom over here at the Renegade Racing Channel. First, want to give a quick apology for not posting much lately. Um, a lot of y'all don't know, but I actually had a, a heart attack last month and uh, it's kind of put me down, been kind of going through some things, but it's all blood pressure related and we got things figured out and now I'm doing a whole lot better, living a more healthier lifestyle. So back at it, back in the shop and ready to work. So what we got going on today is I got a buddy of mine that's wanting to build an LSV tech and as a lot of y'all know back in the day that's all I did was Honda everything even though I still got Hondas now I've got LS's in them and kind of went a different direction but uh, going back to the original roots LSV tech so we got a, uh, a gutted block here and I've already started on it I started yesterday I cleaned this thing up it was really dirty and I stripped it so it had a crank in it and some other things and had some crank damage done on it and stuff of that nature so we're starting fresh and we're going to completely redo this thing now behind the camera which you don't see but i'll show you here in a minute i've got another engine it's missing an oil pan a couple other little things we got a gsr head on it and uh full intake and all that stuff but we got an aftermarket intake on this thing etc so the plan with this engine is to make somewhere in the ballpark of you know 800 wheel horsepower so it's easily achievable especially with you know all the proper stuff such as you know connecting rods uh pistons and and things that can make that kind of power and handle it um, we're still working with a stock block so exceeding that and making numbers such as 2000 where, where you're seeing these big you know uh, four cylinder cars going extremely fast they're running billet blocks from four piston shout out to four piston but uh making crazy numbers and it is achievable um but not so much with a stock block you're going to split this thing in half so we're going to go for around 800 wheel on this thing and uh, see what we can do with that um, in the car so we're going to build this thing in the shop in front of you um, from a, a core like we got right here all the way until completion until we got this thing on the dyno and we're making some big numbers with it so let's get started right now as i said i've got this thing fully disassembled all the water jacket plugs are out of it, everything. The only thing I've done is clean the outside of the block and of course painted it. So uh, we used some engine enamel paint and got this thing shining up. So it looks really good. And now we're just gonna start doing the prep work to get this thing ready for assembly. I've got a hone on the way so that we can hone out these cylinder walls. Um, we already have a sleeve girdle in this thing and it just helps protect the sleeves from walking back and forth now if you were to like build this thing crazy you could get like a dart and sleeve kit for this thing and pull out the sleeves it would have to go to a machine shop have them fit it in and then machine machine the deck and all that stuff the deck on this thing actually looks really good so um, i've straight edged it already everything is perfect so we're ready to go together with this thing other than cleaning everything up so um we got the uh, the sleeve girdle in here. We're also going to install a block girdle on this thing because this will be a boosted application. So we don't want the crank walking on this thing and the main caps moving, etc. So it helps reinforce that. So we're going to put a billet block girdle on it um, and a couple other things. We got eagle rods on the way. We got Wiseco pistons for this thing. Um, a ton of things. So um, this thing is really going to make some steam. So pay attention and follow along. As you see right here, we got our donor motor. Um, I'm going to get to pulling this apart today. Um, so we're going to kind of show you how that comes apart and goes back together. But again, we're going to build this thing from top to bottom, put it in the car and dyno this thing. So this will be a great tutorial. We're going to break this up in a couple different groups. And uh, that way you can kind of follow along and make different steps as we go. Action over here. So what I want to do is actually after I've got this thing already cleaned, and paint it on the, on the outside of the block. I wanna go ahead and clean up this top surface because there's a little overspray on it. I didn't really focus on taping this thing off because there really was no reason. Everything's completely apart. But I wanna clean up anything that's gonna have mounting surfaces on it, such as the front over here. I've already started doing some cleanup on that and, and everything that's gonna have something mounted to it because I don't want paint um, in between it. I don't want paint inside the engine. I don't want paint in the oil galleries. I don't want paint in the uh, coolant gallery. So we're going to clean all that up really quick and uh, then we'll get started. What 
what we're using here is a B18 B1. You can do the B20 VTEC. Um, you can do, yeah, the B20, the B18 B1. Uh, and, and you know, they, they, they have other Frankenstein engines out there, such you can take like a Honda Accord single cam, like the F20, and put like uh, an H22 head on it. So there's a bunch of different combinations where you can do an LS VTEC or a, a Frankenstein motor, as a lot of people like to call it. But we're going to go this route. We're going to go B18 B1 with a GSR head on this thing and a little bit of turbo to make some real power. Now what I'm using right here, this is a brass um, wheel, um, and brass won't cut into the metal, all right, and it's only going to clean it. It might give it like some slight surface scratching, which is a good thing because I want my head gasket to bite in this thing. So we're going to go ahead and clean up this top deck and make it shine. The biggest thing is, is you want to take your time with this. Whenever you're building an engine, the biggest thing you can do is take your time so that way we ensure we don't make any mistakes. Especially with making the amount of power that we want to make on this thing, we don't want any problems. So one of the things that I do whenever I disassemble the engine is I pulled out all the water jacket plugs. One of the things that I also like to do is when I pull these things out is I like to polish these up on the wire wheel. You know, it just helps whenever you're reassembling this thing to give it a good clean look. And also when you're cleaning the block out, um, you're able to clean out all the water jackets and make sure that absolutely everything is out of it. Especially whenever you're building a new engine, you absolutely want to do that. So I got new O-rings for these things and new washers and we got them all polished up now. They're looking good. We're going to reassemble these all in the block to give it that nice clean look. All right guys, so we've got the block prepped and ready. The only thing that I haven't done yet is hone the cylinders. So I'll have to re-clean everything, you know, rinse it out real good once I get that done. But however, everything else is completely done. So uh, one of the big things, uh, you know, I just power wash this thing. So one of the things that I want to, you know, really tell you is after you get through, you need to dry this thing out real good and lubricate these cylinders. All right. So I use like a, uh, a chain lube guard um, for like, uh, like a chainsaw and I just spray that in there and it's always worked the best for me. However, oil or something of that nature will work as well. But these things need to be lubed extremely good because they are cast and they will rust. Along with the bottom side of it, we're gonna flip this thing over. All your main caps are cast as well. They are steel and they will rust. So you need to make sure that these things are dried off and lubricated as well. One of the things that I like to do is when I take these things off is I like to run them across the wire wheel just to help clean them up and make them look better. You know, and then that way, if there's any kind of burrs or anything on it, we can go ahead and knock that off as well and also keep them lubricated. And then I reassemble it. I've cleaned the inside out somewhat, but like I said, I've got to go ahead and do a hone on it once my hone kit gets here and then it'll be ready to go. I'll do one more cleaning on it once I get it honed and then we'll start assembling this thing. As far as everything else, I went ahead and I put all my, uh, on my coolant passages. I went ahead and put all my blugs back in it. Um, I like to use like an RTV along with new O-rings and seals. All right, that way I can make sure that these things aren't gonna leak. I polished the dipstick tube. I don't like to paint it. I like to just kind of give it a different look to uh, kind of like make everything match and give this thing a, just a real clean look. Um, again, go through everything, clean off all your surfaces. If you look really close, you can see some hatch marks in there. All right, that's from that wire wheel. Now this thing is completely decked and smooth. Those hash marks are gonna give me a lot better sealing power when I lock that head gasket down. Same thing with, you know, your, your cylinders. When it you cross hatch these and you hone them, that way your rings stick in there really good. Make sure you clean everything out. My fuel, my, my oil filter location, all that's been cleaned. Um, all my plugs are in along with the bottom side. On the front side of the motor, where your oil pump assembly goes, make sure that's all cleaned up really good. You know, water pumps cleaned out, your tensioner pulley, all your mounting surfaces right here are really clean. All right, so this block is prepped, ready to go with the exception of honing it. We'll get that done in the next video and then we'll start putting this thing together. Got it again. So, uh, LSV Tech.
Last video, we got the entire block done, as in cleaning it, painting it, you know, everything that we could do. We cleaned all the main caps, everything's cleaned out. We're gonna get ready to hone this thing, all right? So as far as honing, you gotta get the right size hone for it. You can get on eBay and Amazon and all these other things. Flex Hone seals, a, they sell a wide variety of different hones. So you just gotta make sure you find one that fits the cylinder bore correctly, all right? We've got our hone, and you also wanna get some Flex Hone. It's a lubricant, all right? You're gonna use this stuff sparingly. You just wanna make a good slush inside the cylinder. I put my, uh, my hone on a drill, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up and down the bore. And you're gonna do this for a little bit, but uh, you wanna get a good cross hatch inside the cylinder, all right? That's gonna help seat your rings, et cetera. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. We're gonna hone out all four cylinders, and then once we do that, we're gonna clean the block again, make sure everything's cleaned up, especially all your main caps. You wanna get any kind of sludge out of it, et cetera, and then we'll get to assembling this thing. All of our parts have already came in. Um, I've got them sitting over the floor over here. So we're gonna get to moving on this thing really quick. We're gonna get cleaned up after this hone and start assembling. Here we go. It looks really, really good. So I'm going to uh, clean the cylinder wall out and then I'm gonna give you a close up of what the actual hatch looks like. And that looks really good. Check this out, guys. You see that cross hatch in there? See how great that clean cleared up? Looks really, really good. All the way around. All right, so, and as you see on the old side, there is still some cross hatching in there, but it's really, really dirty, you know? So we're gonna clean all that up and make them look like that. So all the cylinder walls will look exactly the same. And you're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and all the way up. And you just wanna keep floating that hone up and down. Make sure you got it well lubricated, you got a good slush going on in there, and it's gonna clean that cylinder wall right up. We're gonna do all four like that. Then once we get through with that, we're gonna clean the entire block up and get started on assembly. All right, guys, as you can see, we got our block completely done. So we're gonna start assembling on it. So I went ahead and honed this thing. As you can see, we got great cross hatch in this. I know it kind of looks like there might be a crack right there, but it's not. It's just where I pulled the hone out um, without spinning it all the way out. But we got great cross hatch in this thing. Um, I've went ahead and cleaned it after I, I honed it. All right. So I just pressure washed this thing 
and uh, you know, just to make sure I get any debris out of it, especially when you're installing the crank and all that stuff, you don't want anything in it. So I went ahead and pressure washed it, as I said. Um, I used some uh, royal purple and cleaned it up really nice. Now, one of the biggest things that you gotta remember, as soon as you get through pressure washing this thing, you want to re-lube your cylinders and everything inside this, this block. It will rust right away. So as soon as I got through honing everything out and I pressure washed this thing, I came in here, hooked up the air hose, uh, I dried this thing out extremely fast, re-oiled re uh, my cylinders, et cetera, et cetera. So now it's got fresh oil in it, it is ready to go together. So we're gonna start the assembly. Um, first thing we're gonna install is the crank. So I'm gonna get that ready to go and cleaned up and then we're gonna put a crank in it. I'm gonna show you how to torque the bearings in it, et cetera. Now with this, as I said, we are gonna try and make a lot of power with this thing. So instead of using the actual main cap bolts, we've got a set of ARP bolts for it. All right, they're actually studs. So that way we can get extreme locking power with this. We've also got a crank girdle for it to help tie in all the main caps. So that way nothing's walking. That's exa exactly what happened with this engine before is it didn't have anything in, in the bottom end of it and the crank actually walked in this thing. So we're gonna take care of that part of it and build it and show you how to assemble every bit of this the correct way. Once we get done with that, we'll start installing our pistons etc and then continue to go follow for more all right guys i got our bottom end prepped and ready to go for the crank so before we install the crank we're going to install our main bearings all right one of the biggest things is you want to make sure the back side of this bearing is clean you don't want to lube it or anything like that so we're going to install the bearings first all right make sure everything's cleaned out i blow it i wipe it i do everything i can to make sure it's completely spotless. So follow the bearing sequence. You'll see how it has holes in it. You know, that's for lubrication, etc. That goes directly to the crank. That's what the oil spins on, all right? So your oil pump is gonna push oil throughout the block. All right, it's gonna come out these little holes. It's gonna travel through the bearing. All right, so you wanna make sure all that's lined up whenever we uh, set the bearings in. You see these little indentions right here. The bearing's gonna lock into that. All right, then we'll set our crank in, then we'll start building our main caps. We're gonna get to that right now. All right, guys, so we went ahead and installed our lower bearing inside the crank journal. As I said, we cleaned everything out and made sure it was completely dry. We got both of, all of them in there, along with our thrust washers. All right, I dropped one on the floor right here. All right, so we'll roll this one in after we set the crank in. I've got some, uh, this is what I like using, it's High Performance Assembly Lube by Lucas. Um, so we want to coat this bearing, all of them, with assembly lube, especially during startup, et cetera, like that. This is going to protect it. Um, it. It eliminates dry starts, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, you'll have oil in it. We'll pre-prime the oil pump and all that stuff once we get it going. But I'm going to go ahead and pre-lube these things. This stuff is pretty thick, you know, so I like laying it in there thick. You know, that way we can guarantee everything is good and now that the bearing is in there the back side is going to be okay so we don't have to worry about destroying that you can get this thing lubed up really good and now that we're assembling it really doesn't matter where this stuff goes it's just going to help coat everything so yeah we're not worried about having spotless clean anymore you know so get this all in there good. I also like putting this on my thrust washers too. You know, that way when the crank rolls around on these things, it's gonna be safe as well. All right, if you look at the thrust washer, you'll see it has an indention on one side of it. That's for oil flow, all right? So you wanna make sure that's facing the outside towards the crank itself. Now that we got this thing lubed up, we're gonna go ahead and set the crank down into it. Be very careful as you do this. All right, now that I got that set down in there, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this thrust washer, the backside, because it keeps wanting to fall out, down in there. We'll go ahead and pre-lube it first. And we will slide that right in. And you just kind of got to walk it around. 
and then as we get it in there and we put this main cap off when we bolt it down it'll set everything in there and it'll be good to go so now that we've got this part done we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our main cap bolts or studs in there let me rephrase that we're going to go ahead and sit them in there before we put our main caps and our girdle on we'll be back in a second Now with our main stud kit, as I said, we're gonna be putting a girdle over this. So you'll notice in your main stud kit, you got four bolts that are shorter or studs that are shorter than the other one. These are gonna go on the outside and then your six long studs are gonna go on the inside. So as with every ARP kit, it comes with, you know, some uh, lubricant. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and lube, lube the end of the, the bolt or the stud before we set this thing down in here. Now you'll notice whenever you look at these studs, if you're ever confused by which way they go, all right, on one side, you're gonna have an opening for an Allen key. That's so that we can torque these things down in there, which they don't have to be torqued. You just want them hand tight inside that thing. And then whenever you get to torquing on it, on your actual bolts, that's what'll do the job to get the rest of the way in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get these all in. We'll stick an Allen key on the end of these and go ahead and tighten them down, hand tight. And then uh, we'll get to the girdle and putting the main caps on. All right, we got some good news and bad news, guys. So I got to looking through our parts and then I also checked my shipping confirmation and my block girdle has not gotten here yet. But that's okay, because we can continue to assemble the engine um, and then we'll just wait on those three main caps. I went ahead and put on number one and number five since we've already got this far. Now, torque sequence on ARP uh, main cap bolts is going to be 30, 60, and then 80 foot pounds. That's a lot more than you're going to see on stock, you know, main cap bolts, which is good because we want that locking power, especially going to be making that much horsepower and turning the RPMs in this engine. So, went ahead and stuck these bearings in. All right, they're already lubed up. Our backside bearings are in, they're lubed up. Everything's torqued front and back ready to go, except our girdle. Now, another thing too that I haven't mentioned yet, if you're gonna do a girdle, all right, you're gonna need to utilize a windage tray and a pickup tube from a GSR engine. All right, so, and you can buy these, they come in kits. So this is a brand new windage tray and pickup tube from a GSR. and also comes with a nice little bolt set. Everything's brand new. All right, and the reason for that is, is because the main caps are gonna set down low, uh, well, outside further with that girdle plate on. So you gotta make sure you get these parts right here. We're still waiting on the girdle. It's a billet girdle, so it'll look really good in there. Once we get it in, we'll go ahead and torque it down the rest of the way, and then we can go ahead and start putting the rods and all that stuff in. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the oil pump pump on and continue to go with this thing as far as we can go until that girdle gets here. Right. All right, so up next guys, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the oil pump. Now, this is a brand new oil pump. It's a high pressure oil pump. Comes with a new crank seal already in it and it's ready to go. Now there isn't a gasket for the oil pump, but it comes with some high temp silicone. There is an O-ring that needs to be in place. We're gonna go ahead and put that O-ring in and then we're gonna outline this thing with this high temp silicone. Make sure everything's very clean and well put. Then we'll go ahead and install it, put our bolts in, torque everything to spec, and then that one will be ready to go. And then we can start installing the crank pulley and all of that stuff. So we're gonna get to that right now. All right, guys, we went ahead and got the oil pump on. You got two 12 millimeter bolts down here and you got four 10 millimeter bolts up at the top. All right, so I went ahead and dressed this thing with high temp silicone. Remember our O-ring that we put up in here. All right, I like to wire wheel all my bolts. I know I've said that before. It keeps it a clean look. Everything that we're putting on here that came off that was dirty, went ahead and cleaned it up. Um, torqued that down. You got 20 foot-pounds down here, around 10 foot-pounds up here. Everything's torqued. Went ahead and cleaned up our timing belt gear. All right, I wire wheeled it as well. And then you got your two holders, and that keeps the timing belt centered, all right? and they bow to one side. So you wanna have the bow go to the inside of the wheel on both sides of it. Went ahead and did that. We went ahead and put our pulley on and went ahead and torqued it, all right? 
put on our timer belt tensioner, it's brand new, and our water pump, it's brand new. All right, water pump comes with an O-ring. I also use a little high temp silicone in places on it. Um, you got five 10 millimeter bolts on it, torqued to 10 foot pounds, all right? Everything's torqued on it and everything's ready to go on this side of it. Again, we're waiting on the rest of our, uh, our crank girdle to go ahead and finish that. I went ahead and put our head studs in at the top, so it's ready to go. Everything is assembled. You see the crank down there in the bottom. All right, so we're making headway on this thing. Um, that's about enough that I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this video together um, from cleaning it all the way to where we are right now. We went ahead and disassembled our donor motor. So I'm using a lot of parts off of it. Um, we're also gonna use this head. So I'm gonna clean that thing up. That's our GSR head for this LSV tech that we're building right here. Well, we spent a whole day on this thing, but here's where we're at. Not a hard build. All right, just follow along the steps of the video, get this thing done, get a big turbo wrapped on it. We'll be making around 800 wheel. Keep following along for more. So long, gay boys. <laughs>